all we really have to do here is get a screwdriver, right, and go in there and start lifting these and just pushing out. And that's how we take the grill out. 240 grit because we're gonna sand out all the bad clear coat, some of the imperfections I'm gonna show you. Uh, then we're gonna get down in here, we're gonna feather out all this chip marks, okay, feather all in here out, and the hood was painted before. If we look closely into the clear, you could see some fish eye, okay, so it was painted before, okay, so we wanna get our DA and just go over all of this, get it nice and flat so we don't feel any imperfections. So you can see right away all the clear, the old clear, the high spots. Okay. All in here is all done. A uh, little bit of scratching in here in the plastic. What we could do after we primer it is just fill it with glazed putty um, and then water sand it with 400 and then give it a quick coat of primer again and then sand it again. Orange peely looky, we wanna take that out. That's the whole goal of prepping before paint is you want it to get it to look flat, matte color like this, dull looking, okay? But this is not a final grit, right? We wanna finish with 400 before we paint. Now you could see the hood was painted before and they just masked around it because you could see some of the new clear coat build up. Right, so we're gonna sand this area down, make it nice. Okay, this dent that you see right here is so small that I'm just gonna scuff this area with 80 grit by hand. And as you know, it's important to always blow off, all right, even under the hood, okay? Spray, you don't want dirt ending up in your paint job, right? So it's always good to have clean parts. Most as possible, I like to actually spray degreaser underneath, hit it with a brush and wash it all out clean if you're doing parts like this. But just for this example here, I'm gonna just do it with wax and grease remover. Take off our wax, and then we could finish sanding. I had a guy once tell me, oh, Tony, I, I opened the can of Bondo. This is a non-VIP member. And he's like, I saw all this glaze, so I just dumped it out, right? No, that's wrong. You wanna mix this stuff in, because this is part of the, uh, benzoyl peroxide and all that other chemicals in here that actually make the Bondo work and get hard when you put your hardener in there, right? I had to mix a little bit of Bondo up. Again, for every golf ball size of body filler, you wanna put about eight drops of hardener because I want it to get hard quick so we can finish and, and do our work, you know, get things done. Don't push too hard when sanding because if you do, you can distort the panel and sand, and, and, and your sanding won't come out even. So be sure to hold it pretty light. You don't want to push down too hard. I had to video this. I totally screwed up on the body filler on this piece here, the bumper cover because I was in a rush, okay? And this is what happens when you don't put enough hardener in your body filler, all right? I didn't put enough. Uh, I purposely went on the light side because I wanted time to basically, time to play so I could lay the body filler on this bumper cover to fill in all the rock chips. I, I messed up. I didn't put enough hardener in the Bondo, so I had to scrape it all off. You saw what I did. It didn't dry, so it was kind of like a sticky, and it was stuck on here. So I had to scrape it off and I used a metal putty knife. Okay, you gotta use a metal putty knife and make sure you use a wire brush and clean it every once in a while because it just gets sticky and it. So that's what I did. It took me about an hour to basically go over all the spots, okay, scrape it all off and then put it on, a, put some lacquer thinner on a rag and just wipe off the sticky or else it's just gonna clog up your sandpaper on your disc when you're sanding and it's just gonna be a nightmare, all right? So I'm filming this because you guys are gonna run into mistakes every once in a while. Uh, plus you could see that, hey, even someone like me who has tons of experience, tons of years in auto body, right? You goof up once in a while, okay? And a professional is not somebody who doesn't mistakes, it's someone who knows how to fix the mistakes that he's made.
So another way you know you have wet um, tacky body filler is that after you know an hour, two hours, it's still tacky feeling and if you rub some sandpaper on it, it just clogs the sandpaper immediately. Scraped off the old Bondo, uh, we basically wiped this area with thinner. It's clean for a new skim coat of fresh Bondo, body work it, and then what we're gonna do is paint this panel. So here's our new skin coat of Bondo really quickly. And after we do that, we're gonna rasp it just to take off the high edges, block sand it, 80 grit, okay? Uh, here, what we're doing is basically washing every down, everything down with wax and grease okay, remover. Nice. We're gonna go ahead and spray our Evercoat filler primer on all of our panels. Heavy coats, fill in all the imperfections, and then we're gonna basically cut this down with 400 grit. So as you see, we're just walking around the car. Um, all of the bodywork is pretty much done and primed. Just showing you a quick overview. We got a couple of spots on the hood. Rock chips on the front of the hood, the front bumper cover, 400 grit on a block. That's called the holy block here. Okay, wet sand. And as I was doing it, I was like, man, this is taking forever. So I decided to just throw some on a DA. You could use 320 to 400 on a DA and just dry sand it down. And that's what I started doing after a while. I was like, this is just too much. I wanted to get it done quicker. You know, there was a point where I used to do a lot just by hand. And you could do that, you know, and the job comes out really nice if you go by hand. Like what I'm doing right here is you want to finish by hand. Because you, with your hand, you could feel all the little imperfections. So what I'm doing here is using an old piece of 400, so it's very smooth by now. And I'm using it to wash the quarter panel down. Because that's where we're, gonna, we're also going to blend into that quarter panel. Here I'm popping off the rear trunk emblem because we don't want it on there. I was only going to paint that top strip where my left hand is, but I decided to do the whole trunk because there was a couple of imperfections in the trunk as well. So again, I'm using the old 400 grit paper and I'm being very, very careful that I don't hit the light or the bumper. Feel free to pop out the light, you know, feel free to, to mask off the bumper cover if you want to. Also very, very important to wash the complete car down before you do any paint job. Okay, and blow it off and make sure it's super, super dry. So the next day here is where you see me masking it off. This is not the same day. So I let it dry really good. I called it a day. And then the next day I blew it off really well before I started masking it. And then showtime. Okay, and you know, I could have took out that back lens, but I didn't want to. You know, it's all up to you. I just masked it up and uh, shot the quarter panel. Good base coat, about a hundred bucks for this quart. Remember, one quart will make two quarts after mixed with your reducer. All right, it's a one-to-one -one mixture. So for one quart, I would add one quart of reducer to make me a half of gallon. 36 ounces here. Four cups equals a quart. Eight, 16, 24, 32. A cup is four ounces, right? No, a cup is eight ounces. Eight, 16, 24, 32. Four cups in a quart. Four quarts equal a gallon. Okay, so this is gonna make me a half a gallon of sprayable material. People say, do you worry about overspray? You know, you don't have to worry about overspray if you're doing base coat, clear coat. It's not that bad. It's not gonna make your tools and it's not gonna make everything in the shop a different color. But if you're doing enamel, acrylic enamel, a synthetic enamel paint job, single stage, that stuff will turn your floor whatever color you're painting. And again, I say it in all my videos, Okay, we're just gonna fold it up so it's palm size. One more time, just like this. You could tack between base when it's dry, but never tack between clear coat, all right? So I wanted to treat you with my sexy voice here, <laughs> but um, when spraying your bumper covers, you just want to make sure that you're getting all the areas and you may have to adjust your nozzle 
you know, from a wide fan to a more of a narrow fan to get in some of these areas. And in, in my other painting videos, I show you, you know, how to do that step by step. Um, again, you know, this is such a huge project. I literally got hours and hours of this project in VIP. And I go over every little step, why I'm doing it, why you should do it, you know, why you should do things this way, why you shouldn't do things that way. And uh, I cover everything. This was more of a overall view so you can get the idea of how things are done. So, you know, I, I hope you're enjoying the video anyway. I hope it's showing you the whole full process. And um, don't forget, you know, go to learnautobodyandpaint.com and download a free auto body and paint DIY manual that I have for you. And um, I also hit you up with a special offer to join VIP after you do that. So it's all up to you. You know, if you want to take your auto body skills to the next level, uh, come join us. Come join the family. Right here, uh, we're adding our first coat of clear to the panel. And, you know, some people have different ways of doing it. Some people like to put on a, a tack coat and then two, two medium wet coats. I start off by doing a medium wet coat from the very beginning. We're going to go around to the other side. And a lot of times when you're immediately laying clear coat on, you're going to see like little specks of dots in the clear coat. That's fine because it's just setting up. It's just atomizing on the panel. And it's just, you might see little bubbles, but that just disappears as it flows out onto your panel. All right, so let's go ahead and do our hood. And we're giving this thing two heavy coats of clear. So right here I saw a little dust go in the paint so I just used my two pinking nails that I grow out to grab it out and on my final coat I make sure to you know bury it and really lay the clear coat on uh, the whole trunk this way if I have to buff it I have plenty of room to buff it and get it to a high gloss. Alright final coat of clear I'm laying it on super super heavy and again you know as long as you're clearing with just clear coat you don't have to be afraid about runs, but because you could always color sand and buff runs. Hey, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Listen, I could have showed you a lot more, but I wanted to keep it short and simple because I know you may be busy today, right? So click the button over here, get your free 85 page auto body manual if you haven't yet. Subscribe, like, share, and comment. Thanks, I'll see you soon, bye.